Kutzampula, you're watching Bhutan This Week with me, Kulauti Guragai. Our main stories this week. The first group of tourists arrives in the country after more than two years. Supreme Court also finds Kandu Aungmo guilty of criminal conspiracy and other criminal offenses. Thousands of poultry birds die from unknown illness in Sarpang. A group of 32 international tourists arrived in the country on 2nd April. It was the first time the country received tourists in a group since the country closed its borders in 2020. The group from the United States and Europe is staying in the country for nearly a month. As Druk Air landed at Poro Airport with the tourists this morning, it brought in hopes for the shrinking tourism industry. Back in 2019, Bhutan was expecting a boom in the tourism industry after Lonely Planet, a travel guidebook publisher, declared Bhutan as the number one country to travel in 2020. However, business went south when the pandemic crippled the tourism sector across the world. But this is changing. The elated airport officials welcomed the tourists with ceremonial scarves. 36-year-old Hannah Willock from the United States with her associates planned this trip for the last one year. A little overwhelmed. It's so beautiful here. And just to fly in through the mountains is a very different experience from any other place I've been. So, yeah, I'm very happy to be here. Here we're going to be on retreat for the first couple of weeks. We were hoping the trip would work out and we weren't sure with some COVID restrictions, but we got, you know, we got the good news uh, a couple months ago, or I guess a couple weeks ago, that the trip was approved. And coming in, we came over the mountains and just see this, you know, beautiful uh, kingdom. And I was excited. Last time I was here, none of this was around. That was uh, absolutely absent. So yeah, now it's very well done. Very, especially, you know, these models of songs. The tourism sector was one of the main income generators during the pre-pandemic times. In 2019, Bhutan saw more than 315,000 tourists generating revenue of about 89 million US dollars. With the government slowly opening up, the tourism sector is set to bounce back from the hard times it endured. For Namgyewachu in Poro, Srengzam, PBS News. After a hiatus of two years, Bhutan Echoes, Drukyul Literature Festival will resume this month. Since 2020, the festival was deferred twice due to the COVID pandemic. Bhutan Echoes is a year-round initiative to nurture literacy culture in Bhutan. From celebrated authors and writers like Her Majesty the Queen Mother Dojuang Mo Wangchuk to young poet Gezang Dechen Choden, the world expert on freshwater and related ecosystems Sandra Postel, esteemed French writer Matthew Ricard, and the founder of YY Noodles, Binod Kumar Chaudhary, this year's festival will have an array of international speakers from India, Nepal, East Asia, Europe, the US and Canada. In 2020, Mountain Echoes was rebranded as Bhutan Echoes Drukyul's Literature Festival by His Majesty the King to promote more local engagement. In the planning of this year's festival, we rallied our communities of readers and writers to take part in designing the sessions and collectively generating ideas for it. Uh, and and th at this year's festival, we have a lot more uh, Bhutanese authors being featured for starting and a lot of young and upcoming authors uh, will be also featuring one of the youngest authors who uh, is a 12 year old themed stories and ideas for a changing world the festival will start from 22nd april the three-day festival will be streamed live on facebook the festival was deferred for the last two years but this year we are re resuming with a virtual approach and um, making it accessible to everyone in and outside of bhutan it was in 2010 when Her Majesty the Queen Mother Dojong Mwangchu co-founded Bhutan's first literature festival, Mountain Echoes, as a Bhutan India initiative. Samtan Dolker, BBS News. 
The Supreme Court finally brings down the curtain on the case of the commissioning of criminal conspiracy, mutiny, abating mutiny and other criminal offences. The Supreme Court upheld the High Court's judgment and dismissed Kandu Wangmo's appeal on Thursday last week. Kandu Wangmo was sentenced to a concurrent prison term of nine years. She appealed to the court in December last year. The Supreme Court convicted 42-year-old Kando Angmo of abating mutiny, criminal misappropriation of property, larceny by deception, illegal possession of a firearm, and impersonation of uniformed personnel. She also received an additional prison term of 18 months for the use of unauthorized vehicle, illegal procurement of confidential documents, and harassment. However, she can pay in lieu of the 18 months prison term. The Supreme Court also sentenced her to 21 years in prison for sedation in January. She has to serve a prison term of 30 years in total. Kanduangmo colluded with former RBG Commandant Brigadier Tlitabke, former Supreme Court Justice Kilit Sring and former Pemagasal Rangpan Ishiduji to overthrow the Army's Chief Operations Officer. She was arrested in July 2020. For Kiladem, Sangi Chizong for BBS News. The Panbang Dunka Court in Chemgang yesterday convicted two men for the statutory rape of a nine-year-old girl. The court sentenced 36-year-old Nathan Wangchu, the girl's stepfather, to life imprisonment. He also has to pay 45,000 item as compensation to the victim. 38-year-old Sangi Gelsen was sentenced to five and a half year in prison. He was convicted for attempted rape of a minor. He is the landlord of the house where the nine-year-old girl lives. He also has to pay a compensation of over 26,000 item. The two men were convicted for separate incidents. Both men were arrested by the police in November last year. The incident came to light after the girl complained to her mother of pain while urinating. The mother then took the child to the hospital and reported the case to the police. The Supreme Court has sentenced a former teacher in Sirang to 10 and a half years in prison for molesting students in 2019. The Supreme Court dismissed Dilbado Chetri Nupani's appeal and upheld the High Court's judgment on Monday. The judgment stated that the teacher had molested 10 students aged 8 to 10 years. The court found him guilty of second-degree felony as it is a heinous crime. The convict has also been ordered to pay compensation of 90,000 item to each student. Last year, the Tsirang District Court sentenced him to 30 years in prison but the High Court gave him a concurrent prison term, meaning he could serve all the sentences together. Consumers across the country are now able to buy chili at a comparatively reasonable price. This is after the agriculture minister allowed vegetable vendors to import the spice directly from across the border since last month. The ministry initiated a time-bound import for three months in January to meet local demand for chili. The Food Corporation of Bhutan was importing and distributing the spice to local vendors. However, the corporation stopped the import due to high pesticide content last month. The vegetable vendors began importing chilies since 23rd March. The Bhutan Agriculture and Food Regulatory Authority have so far allowed vegetable vendors to import close to 140 metric tons of chilies. Of it, around 10 metric tons were rejected due to high pesticide content. Bafra officials test the samples for chemical content at various entry points. If the sample tests are negative, it means uh, the pesticide content is below the maximum residue level. So the consignment is uh, cleared for import. If the sample tests positive, then the consignment is rejected from the point of entry and the importers are made to uh, re-export the consignment back to the country of origin. The vendors are required to follow the ministry's standard operating procedure for the import of safe green chilies. They will have to take the responsibility to send back the consignment if it is not safe for consumption. The reason for allowing all, uh, all interested private sectors to import the chili is to have a competitive price uh, uh, in the market so that you know, the, the, the cost of the chili reduces for the affordability of the consumers. The vendors also have to sign an undertaking letter with the ministry stating that they will only supply chilies that are safe for consumption. Both vendors and consumers welcomed the move. <laughs> 
the agriculture minister said that individuals importing chilies without informing the Bafra officials will be penalized as per the law. For Karma Wangdi, Sunam Pem for BBS News. Thousands of poultry farm birds are dying mysteriously in Sarbang. Reports of birds dying due to an unknown sickness started coming in from the 24th of last month. Officials are trying to ascertain the cause. Indra Bahadur of Chekorling village has lost almost half of the birds in his poultry farm. For the past five days, he has been picking up dead birds and disposing of them. It's been five days now since the birds started dying. It started with two birds that fell sick and then the next day it was about 20 birds. A total of 4,500 birds are reported to have died in Chuzigong, Kakiling and Dikiling Gyogs. Nine poultry farmers have been affected. The farmers say the birds become weak, lose appetite and then die. In just three days, about 700 birds died here. I think about 1,200 birds died in my farm. I had to dispose sacks of dead birds. The farmers and livestock officials initially suspected a viral disease called the infectious bursal disease or IBD. But tests carried out by officials ruled it out. The district livestock office said they are trying to find out if it was due to the bird feeds since they were all given commercial feed. They said feed samples have been sent to the National Center for Animal Health in Timpu for lab testing. The test results are expected to come out tomorrow. For Karmarongdi in Sarpang, Sam Tindolkar, BBS News. A highly contagious disease affecting dogs has broken out in Paro. About 10 cases of canine parvovirus are being reported at the Paro Veterinary Hospital every day. The outbreak was first reported about two weeks ago. Ten dogs have succumbed to the virus. Canine parvovirus is a highly contagious virus that causes severe illness in young and unvaccinated dogs, but it is not infectious to humans and other domestic animals. The virus spreads through direct contact with an infected dog or by indirect contact through a contaminated object. The Zonkak Veterinary Hospital has been treating 40 sick dogs every day. Symptoms of parvovirus include lethargy, loss of appetite, vomiting and often bloody diarrhea with fever. Officials said that vaccinating all pets and stray dogs would reduce the outbreak. Meanwhile, officials have been trying to contain the virus from spreading further through the ongoing accelerated dog population management and rabies control programs campsite. The control program began last month. We found the first outbreak of the disease from Shaba and Isuna. We have not yet performed any surgery on the dogs from that area. It's because there are high chances of the virus spreading to the other dogs that are brought here. According to the dog population management, Paro has over 8,000 dogs, including pets. Of that, nearly 1,500 are unsterilized. For Namge Wanchu in Paro, Sunam Pem for BBS News. Gomtu town in Samse is believed to have evolved with the establishment of the Penance Cement Authority in 1982. Over the years, this small border town has come in handy to the residents of Gomtu town and Funsupelri Gewak. But the development in the town has been sluggish. The town is desperately calling out for major infrastructural development. 
Gomtu town is one of the oldest towns in Samsi and talking to the residents here many said that they are not happy with the overall management of the town area. They said that the town today is in desperate need of major infrastructure development. A quick walk through the town area and you will see buildings as old as the town. Roads riddled with potholes, a poor drainage system and stray cattle roaming freely in the middle of the roads. While a garbage collecting vehicle can be seen making rounds, many say a lot can be done when it comes to waste issues in the town. Frustrated with the conditions of the town, a few residents claim that the town has been disregarded over the last few years. The town is as it is in the past. There is no development in the town. We don't have proper town planning like others and it is an industrial town. As such, we have to depend on the industry for any development. The majority of the town area falls on Pendant Cement Authority's land. The chief executive officer of Pendant Cement Authority said that since Komtu Town was declared as a Yen La in 2015, the office cannot do much to improve infrastructures and amenities in the town. However, Last year, the office proposed to Zongkak municipality to convert Gomtu town into an industrial town. The CEO said that they are yet to hear from the municipality office. The Zongkak municipality informed that the office also initiated Gomtu area action plan before dependent cement authorities proposal. For now, the proposal have been forwarded to the Works and Human Settlement Ministry, Economic Affairs Ministry and the Land Commission. They are waiting for a response. This is Pasong Doji for BBS News, Samti. Ever since the pandemic struck the country two years ago, the number of Indian lo loaders in Funseling, Tombe kept getting slimmer by the day. Today, only a handful of them are working in the country's commercial hub. So to fill in the gaps, more than 50 Bhutanese loaders have come together to provide loading and unloading services of any commercial goods in and around Funtiling town. These loaders officially joined Bale Shapto Detsen, a registered business agency that deals with loading and unloading services yesterday. The government's move to revoke driver switching mode at Sorchen and transitioning to the phase two of COVID-19 response have brought them renewed hope and opportunities. They now endeavor to improve their economic conditions. According to Bale Shapto Detsen, since loaders have experience of working at the mini dry port and the truck parking, they don't have any issue with the current job. With words of encouragement from the founder, some unemployed youth in the town have taken up the loading and unloading works. Ladi labor ki lachi roda, thelen diya ikshana ki lachi roda, ladi lara hi ise. The ladi baby, so ra tiru di lejim be zoo, tige pumping chalu ki duta ni ro, rangi ta gobi ki chache du sunyo ni ro, the lejim be use be ko. The labor ministry's regional office said the young people willing to toil as loaders to earn income will motivate others to follow suit. Jee da tim dalu, the ane be tonga the noom be dalu. Balish Abdu Desen is working on loading and unloading charges and other means of sharing the dividends with the loaders. They will provide the services once all these are sorted.
Meanwhile, with more relaxations from today, residents in Finsling are optimistic that the country's economic lifeline will be a buzz with commercial activities. For Sunam Penjur in Finsling, Sunam Pem for BBS News. To meet farmers' demand for fertilizers in the country, the Bhutan Board Products Limited in Darla under Chuka Zongak launched its organic manure called Greenier on 4th April. The project is the largest and first of its kind that will recycle forestry waste into nutrient packed organic manure. Generating 5 metric tons of wood mulch and wet dust daily for the past three decades, the wastes will no more be useless. The company will turn them into something valuable for the farmers. The wood mulch is sieved, shredded, crushed and then mixed with cow dung to enrich the nutrient content of the manure. Currently, the company produces 1,500 kilograms of manure daily. Unlike others who produce manure using feces of animals such as cows, pigs and birds, we are making it with wood mulch. Our wood mulches have been buried under the soil for the past three decades. It is therefore very nutritious. The company is charging 199 newton for 5 kilograms of the manure and 799 newton for 25 kilograms. But it plans to lower the price for those in rural areas. There are over 10 people engaged in manure production. Currently, mixing of ingredients is all done manually. We plan to automize the mixing and drying of manure in the near future. The manure was used on trial in Thimpu, Darla and Finsling last year. To test the quality of the manure, we sent a sample to one of the renowned laboratories in Kolkata, India. The test results showed that the nutrient content of our manure exceeded the standards set for organic manure. The manure manufacturing unit was set up at 3 million newton. The National Organic Flagship Project under the Ministry of Agriculture and Forests provided financial assistance of over 1 million newton. If the product does well in the market, the company intends to expand its operation. For Sunam Penjur in Chuka, Sunam Pem for BBS News. That's all we have for this week. Thank you for watching. Stay safe.